On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, container imports drop off a cliff. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. It's the holiday season here at What's Going On With Shipping, so I'm going to get the most out of my holiday Hawaiian shirt I can get. We've also got lightning and thunder here in beautiful North Carolina in advance of that cold front going through. So if you hear some booming here, that's what you see or hearing in the background and a dog in the background. So let's talk about this story because this is a really interesting story because if you read different journals and watch different videos from different people, you'll get different interpretations about this. And I think it's a really interesting narrative of what is happening with the importation of containers into the United States. What does it mean for the end of this year? And more importantly, what's it going to mean for next year? So before we go any further, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into this. So this is the chart that's provided by Descartes. Descartes has been doing this global survey since back in August. And I, of course, will have the link in the show notes for you to be able to look at it. But they've been putting out this chart, updating it every month. And one of the things that becomes fairly obvious here is this purple line shows you imports into the United States in 2022. And right up until about July, it exceeded all past numbers. And we kind of knew that. For a variety of reasons, we knew, for example, that there was going to be an issue with the negotiations on the West Coast between the ILWU, the International Longshore Warehouse Union, and the Pacific Maritime Association, that there was the potential for a strike. Now, the ILWU and PMA will say there's no chance for a strike, but nobody believes them. And as long as there's no contract, there's always the chance for a strike. We saw this with the railways. And so what a lot of freight shippers did was front load their cargo coming to the U.S. So we saw really large numbers coming in early into the U.S. in early 2022. You also have the issue with a lot of freight sitting in warehouses left over from last holiday season that didn't get out onto store shelves in time because they arrived late because of the huge amount of cargo that came in late in the season. This is that green line here for 2021. And so what has happened is the total amount of freight into the United States has fallen. Back in June, June 6th of 2022, Henry Byers over at Freightways penned a story where he says that freight, uh, freight volumes was going to collapse. And if you look at this chart, it pretty much looks like it has collapsed. It has dropped from almost two and a half million TEUs, this is 20-foot equivalent units, these are the 20-foot containers, down to just over 1.9 million. So, I mean, you're talking about a substantial fall there, almost 20% in that level. Now we're still above 2019 levels and 2022 still remains a record year when it comes to freight, but you've seen this precipitous drop kind of off the cliff. Now the question is, what does that mean? What does that mean for freight going forward? We already know what it means for freight rates. Freight rates have dropped all the way down to pre-COVID levels, especially on the Pacific. But what does this mean going into 2023, the first quarter of 2023, particularly after February, once we get past Chinese New Year? So let's kind of break apart these stories and take a look at them in a little bit of detail here. So this is a story from Mike Schuller over at G-Captain. U.S. imports accelerate decline in November, led by staggering drop for West Coast ports. And this is all based on John McCowan's report, which I'm going to show you here in a second. I just want to highlight a couple of things here that Mike notes in this story. So inbound volumes dropped a whopping 17.5% year over year. Now, this is the other thing that happens. One of the things that a lot of people like to do is compare current freight rates, current volumes to last year's volumes. Well, the problem with comparing 2022 to 2021 is 2021 is the top of Mount Everest. It's a record year. And so anything we did last year is going to look less this year. It, It just is. And so he talks about the fact that this led to a 17.5 year over year drop in November, a staggering 26% decline for the West Coast ports. West Coast ports in particular are feeling this. Out of the top 10 container ports, only Port Houston was immune to year over year declines in November. New York, New Jersey, again, ranked as the U.S. uh, top U.S. port for imports for its fourth straight month. The lowest performers, West Coast ports. Seattle, Tacoma, Long Beach, and Los Angeles. Top ones are the big three on the East and Gulf Coast, New York, Savannah, and Houston. And so let's take a look at, oh, one other thing that John notes, I think is really important here, is the very last bottom here. What's the good news or glimmer of hope? The Shanghai Containerized Freight Index, the SCFI, and the Container Freight uh, Trade Statistics, the CTS, 
indexes, which McCowan says is the best ones to follow, show that prices are ticking back up for freight rates. They're up 36.1% and 127.6% compared to the fourth quarter of 2019. So not they're down from last year. Everything's down from last year when it comes to freight rates. But in terms of looking at 2019, they are much better. All right, let's take a look. This is John's report. And if you don't follow John McCowan, you should on LinkedIn or go over to LinkedIn. You can actually get this delivered to you by an email if you go to John's account. Uh, he also has a Substack you can follow, or, or it's actually a Medium account, excuse me, that you can follow. So it's really good, and I, I strongly recommend it. John is very technical in this in some cases and uses a lot of statistics. And I'm just going to highlight some of them here in this story. I, I summarized a lot of them from what Mike said in his previous story here, but I want to show you this chart. This is the changes in total inbound volume year over year. So this is tracking month by month versus the last previous year. And you can see what I mean by about, first off, the Mount Everest that was the freight in 2021. You can see the massive drop here due to COVID. And then you see a little bit of a drop over here. You got to remember back in 2018, 2019, tariffs and the trade war was on with China. So you had that. And now you're seeing that big dip compared to what we saw from last year. And this is what a lot of people are reading. It's like, man, things are so much worse than they were last year. But again, last year, record level year. Let's keep going here, down here. So this is an interesting chart. Grand total of inbound TEUs volume per month. And he breaks this up. Red is the east of Gulf Coast. The kind of the light blue here is other West Coast. And the dark blue is Los Angeles. But a couple of things to note here. So this line here is the 2 million TEU per month line. And notice we just go over that about mid-2020, right when COVID was you know, coming out and people started buying like crazy. And we basically stayed over that 2 million, except for a little bit of a dip there at the end of 2020 into 2021. And obviously for obvious reasons for that, because again, the holiday season was over. We always expect to see that dip here. But then you come into 2021 and there's no dip. As a matter of fact, it just stays full bore throughout all of 2021 and even peaks higher into 2022. And now you're seeing that drop. You're seeing that drop happen right here. But notice the declining features here of Los Angeles. And that's, I think, a big issue that we're going to come back to and talk about. Go over here, this chart, another interesting chart, West Coast versus East Gulf Coast percentage change in volume over three months. And what you see is they track pretty well together here until basically you come off the backside of COVID. And then what you see is the West Coast drops a lot faster than the East Coast drops, meaning we're seeing that shift in containers from the West Coast to the East Coast. And you see that more right here. This is a chart that shows the West Coast as a percentage of total inbound volume. So back in January of 2017, almost 58% of all containers inbound to the United States went to the West Coast. You don't dip below 50% until early 2020, and that's due to the shutdowns coming out of China, and you just all of a sudden slow down everything coming across in early 2020. It peaks back up again, and you see it, but then you start seeing it dipping back down again, and after Christmas 2021, it hits that level again, just barely hits that 50% level there, comes down below it, pops back up, but now is declining even more. And this is all part of the issues with the West Coast. The labor renegotiations, rail issues, trucking issues, storage issues, the threat of hyper-demerge in the ports of LA and Long Beach, all those issues really led shippers to begin moving their cargo closer to the population. 80% of the U.S. population is east of a line from North Dakota to Texas. They were able to set up their distribution centers. They were able to set up their, their, their hubs. And that facilitated the shift over to the East Coast. And even though East Coast ports backed up, and we saw that off Savannah, off New York, New Jersey, off Houston, they were efficient in that when containers landed in those terminals, they were able to get out very quickly, something that L.A. and Long Beach could not do. All right, let's keep going. So this is the story from Dakar. Again, really recommend going to this. I'll have it in the show notes for you. 
you can take a look at it. They really focus on these elements, but I want to focus on several charts they have because again, I think the data that Descartes puts together is really good. I showed you the chart at the very beginning with that decline from uh, June down to present levels. This is another chart they had. This goes back to 2016 and it shows you the change from October to November across all the years since 2016. And one of the things to note, number one, is there's always a drop from October to November. October it tends to be the peak because that's when you need those containers coming in to get to distribution centers and warehouses, to get into stores and to out to the public in time for the holiday season. So you always tend to see that drop and you see it across the board here. What makes this year pronounced is the scope and size of that drop. It drops 266,000 TEUs from October to November that's a 12% drop, biggest percentage drop since 2018. But notice it drops to from 2.2 million down to one point, almost 1 1.9 and a half. But again, if you got to go back to really back to pre 2017 numbers to get numbers of that size. So again, it's a drop, but is it off a cliff? Yeah, it's off a cliff compared to 2021, 2022 numbers. But is it off a cliff through, if you take out that hump that was created by COVID, and again, I would argue that COVID creates a disruption on the world's oceans akin to the world wars at sea. If you take that out, are we back on track where we should be or shouldn't be? We don't know yet. And I'm going to come back to that in a second. But this chart, I think, is really interesting because it shows you where freight levels should be. This next chart shows you that shift of the top 10 ports by volume in the United States over the past, basically, period. This is the shift from May of 2021 to September of 21 versus July of 22 to November of 22. And what you see is basically the West Coast loses out. Every port that's in the yellow there losing is a West Coast port, except for Norfolk. Norfolk is the one exception there. The ports that gain are on the East Coast. And the biggest winner of them all is Houston, followed by Savannah, New York, New Jersey. And again, uh, those are significant. Those are the three ports that are going to start rivaling uh, L.A. and Long Beach for their business. But again, if you look at other ports, ports that are below the top 10, you're seeing gains in those ports, Jacksonville, Miami, Baltimore, uh, Boston. You're seeing ports that are really gaining on their ability to move cargo. And I think that's the big issue we're seeing. We're seeing that shift. And this is a shift that's been going on for a long time. LA and Long Beach was doing everything they could to entice business into their ports, including allowing shippers to keep containers on their terminals for long periods of time. I talked about this in the last What the Ship about LA and Long Beach ending hyperdemerge. And the fact that they were never going to implement that, it was the huge farce because they couldn't because they had agreements, the terminals and the sh with shippers to allow containers to sit on their terminals for long periods of time. This is the Port of Los Angeles monthly import by year. I pulled this from a Greg Miller story uh, over at Freight Waves. And one of the things you see here is how things have changed. One of the things that really I love to note about this chart, look at the Port of LA in January. Nearly for the past five years, January was really a benchmark, really sitting there at about f between 400,000, 450,000 containers. And notice how LA was up during the first half of the year. That blue is the 2021, red is the 2022. And what happens once you hit the end of June into July, again, ILWU, PMA renegotiation, it falls down precipitously. I mean, you're at a level now that you haven't been at since 2018. And the only time you've been lower than that in the past five years was during COVID in 2020. Now, notice one of the things that happens at the beginning of the year, and if you look at these other charts here, look at where we are in November. Usually in November, December, you see a pretty, you know, in, in two of the four years here, you see a drop. In previous years, you see a little bit of a, almost a, a steady or if not a gain. So what we're seeing here is a drop. But the big thing here is that in January, you still see that drop. But come after February is when you see things start going up, particularly March. March is when you see that growth. What happens if the Port of LA doesn't experience a growth coming out of Q1 into second quarter 2023? That's the big question. 
Long Beach kind of following that model too. Long Beach sometimes gets dragged with LA, I think. At Long Beach, let me be clear, I think is a much different port. I think it's much more efficient, much more effective, and unfortunately, they're saddled with LA. If you look at the LBC term LBCT terminal, the Long Beach Container Terminal, extremely efficient port. Very well run, very productive. And they're able to move containers. Notice the level we're talking about here. They're just under 400,000 containers in the beginning of January. There are 100,000 containers less than that for most of their starts. This is because of the growth of those terminals. And they were really banging it out at almost 450,000 containers. And what we've seen is that precipitous slide. Matter of fact, they're way below levels they've been in the past five years. And again, approaching on those 2018 numbers. What does this all mean? Well, again, I think you got to be careful of the narrative that, first off, we're falling off a cliff. Yes, we, we did fall off a cliff. We fell off Mount Everest, but we're still at K2 levels. We're still pretty high. And the question is, do we fall below those 2018, 2019 levels? Because when you start looking at levels that we've seen, the growth chart since 2008 has been a steady climb in the growth of containers into the United States. Now we're coming back down. Do we see a bullwhip effect? Do we see that big, huge drop off? And then all of a sudden the bullwhip effect and all of a sudden we spring back up again. Uh, that's the question we need to be looking out for right now. Right now you can get deals, deals to ship containers across the Pacific into LA and Long Beach right now. There's capacity there that you can get into. The problem is what happens when LA and Long Beach get back up to where they're normally operating? Do they fall back into the issues that we saw with the ports? One of the things that COVID did and the supply chain crisis did is it shows you the you know where the wounds are, where the leaks are. It's a pressure test. And the pressure test showed this. Houston, Savannah, New York, New Jersey have been better able to handle the pressure. New York, New Jersey has to. They don't have the room that, uh, you know, to grow like Savannah does. And we're seeing that in that port. Same thing in Houston. We're seeing that. Savannah has a luxury. Savannah can be kind of a little bit lax in some things because they have the room to growth. But what we're seeing out of Savannah is not a lax nature at all. They're being really efficient. And this is going to challenge where we want containers going on. At the same time, the second tier ports, the Baltimores, the Miamis, the Jacksonvilles, the Mobiles, the New Orleans, the, the Bostons, the Norfolks are all making challenges. They're all making moves to try to get some of those containers out of the big four corner ports and get them over. So again, we're seeing a variety of services that are out there. Right now, ocean carriers are blanking sailing, something we traditionally see, but at a much higher level than before. The question is going to be come February. So we got about a three-month period here where we're going to be watching and waiting, see what's happening. I fully expect to see numbers for December down. I expect to see January numbers peak back up just a little bit and then drop into February and March. But then March comes, and that's going to be the big question. Where's the economy? Where's the recession? What's going on with inflation? What are costs? What's going on with fuel costs? Because 2023 also sees a new IMO requirement go in for ships to slow down and measure their carbon uh, production. And that's going to create a shift. We got new container ships coming online. We got scrappings coming online. There's a whole lot of factors that are at play here going forward. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, with all this great information I just gave you, support the page. How do you do that? You can make a one-time contribution right over there to the Super Thanks button, contribute to the page, or head on over to Patreon, become a monthly, yearly subscriber to the page. That allows me to keep the lights on in my tree. Oops, actually, lights on in the tree. Allows me to keep adorned in my Hawaiian festive holiday shirt and enjoy this type of news being brought to you on YouTube. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.